Hi everyone, we are here at Inno France 2024. Really excited to be here with Eddie Tezzi, VP Cybersecurity at Alstom. Hi Eddie, how are you doing? I'm good, Amir, how are you? Great, great to be with you. Uh, so since last Inno France, in, uh, what happened uh, in the uh, cybersecurity environment? Uh, what uh, development changed over the years and how it impact, impacted the operators and the manufacturers? I'll say a couple of things. The first one is, if you think about our customers, so a growth in maturity in our customers, maybe a little bit pushed by the regulation, by the authorities, more and more attention on protecting systems that they are buying, so the new system, but also on protecting their existing infrastructure, which is part of the critical infrastructure of their country. That's the first thing. The second thing that we are seeing is an evolution in regulations. More and more regulations coming from authorities at country or regional level. Example, in Europe recently, We have this Cyber Resilience Act, which will be officially uh, published in a couple of weeks, which is really a change compared to what we were seeing before, with a shift of the responsibilities from operation to manufacturer. And we've seen also within our operators, because of all of that, this evolution of maturity that is uh, creating a whole ecosystem with moving up. So compared to two years ago, if you go in the, in the booth and you look, you will see a little bit more cyber security than before. You will see it a little bit more everywhere than before, or not only on specialized companies. And what we've seen also is that more and more dedication. So companies like Cyrus who are uh, really leading the pack in terms of providing dedicated solutions for cybersecurity. It's something that, is, that was rare a couple of years ago, becoming more frequent and is cre creating the right uh, ecosystem for development of the industry. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. And you spoke about the regulatory environment how the regulation change over time, uh, what happened uh, in the last two years, that, uh, and how it impacts you as a vendor and, and the other ecosystem as well. I would say the, the, the major trend I'm seeing since two years is the shift of responsibility. So we are seeing more and more authorities looking for some level of uh, engagement, accountability of product manufacturers over time. So a couple of years ago, operators using the system were in charge to warranty the security. Yeah. Oh. Fact of life is that it's very complex to secure a system which is not designed for that. Then you shift the responsibility and you ask operators to okay. go to the manufacturer, having in mind that the manufacturer will provide products that will come with a certain level of, I would say, by default security, meaning that not only security controls are embedded, you don't have any more blank passport or things like that, but in addition of that, you will have uh, liabilities, duties, from the product manufacturer to make sure that they can provide security updates, security update, advice or mitigations over the lifetime of the product. And for railway, lifetime can mean uh, 40 years or 50 years. So it's a really big challenge for us, not only to do cyber security, but to do cyber security sustainable enough so that we can maintain it for a couple of years. Yeah. So the involvement of the regulatory authorities, it's part of the maturity of the market. Correct. They build the market, they push they, the market. They, and they, Yeah. part of the ecosystem. Right? They, they build the market, they push the market, and sometimes they are a little bit behind and they just realize something is happening and they regulate it. Sometimes they try to influence and to shape by pushing us in some directions and, and really the pushing on uh, if you produce something, you need to make sure that the something will be protected over time is something that is new, especially in the real business where we now, now we need to take that in account and make sure that when we do cyber security, we do it in a way that is really adjusted for our life cycle and our own term services. Uh, with the tech regulatory environment and, and other things that we spoke about it till now, what are the uh, key challenges that uh, customers are facing and how you are prepared for that or you prepare your uh, company to so, this challenge? I'll say that our customers, they faced the difficulty of the pandemic a couple of years ago, and they are now recovering from that. So their traffic level is increasing. The level of effort of all their equipment is increasing, but they need to be more efficient. So by doing, being more efficient, they have to increase the connectivity and increase the digital in their, in their system, which is then impacting us from a cyber point of view. So operators are facing the need to be more efficient, to have more availability of their train, so they bring more connected systems, more software components, which create in turn an expanded surface. The second important challenge I'm seeing is operators need to be efficient. They need to reduce their cost. So whatever solution that we propose, We need to keep in mind that it has to bring enough efficiency so that it's not a killer from a cost point of view. 
So it can be justified because it brings something for the, for the operator. And if you propose cyber security on top of existing systems, especially, you need to really demonstrate the efficiency. So that's really we move from a time where people were looking at the market, taking information on what's existing, to a, a time where they are really thinking about implementation and they start to look at all the parameters, including the cost parameters. So putting a bit of pressure. And the last element I'm seeing for operators is this regulatory environment, which is becoming more stringent. We see now uh, a willingness for certification against cyber. Not clear what it means, how it will be done, but it is in the air. We see this uh, homologation of systems from a cyber point of view, and that the new Cyber Resilience Act is bringing it, bringing it for Europe. I can tell you that it will be everywhere in a couple of years. So having to put a kind of a marking on a system to guarantee something around cyber security is something that will be the challenge in front of us in the coming years. So actually the combination of the customer challenges and needs, uh, the awareness of for the majority of the vendors and the regulatory environment build a huge ecosystem. Exactly. Grow, exactly. Grow, grow, grow. exactly. Yeah. And one of the key elements that we have to, to put in the middle of that is the safety because so far we have not yet addressed safety for uh, cyber security for safety systems. So this is something that we need to tackle, especially in the way. We can take an uh, example in aviation or in, in automotive, yes. but we have to do the same way that we built cyber security for real. There will be a need to build uh, cyber security for safety in real. Yes. So that's uh, the next uh, step on Shaman Zayn. So, so if, you, if you speak about safety, you were involved and we were involved as well in building new standard for right. cyber security over the last two years. Yes. Very soon it will be formally, formally published. Uh, yeah. What was the what were the real uh, the main challenges in building this uh, standard? I think that first of all this standard was necessary. It was absolutely necessary to regulate and to share a common language, have common objectives. So this will be the real purpose of that, and we will achieve it. Second important point is that to create this standard, you have to put around the table people who are in the same industry but from different viewpoints. So infrastructure manager, operator, components. A provider, OEMs, product providers. So a lot of people with sometimes dif different, I would say, angle of view, different interests, and that was not simple. And to make it uh, an adopted standard in the future, we needed to make sure that it speaks to people. So having, making sure that the language that we were using, the acronyms, the, the definitions were things that don't fit the diversity of railway, because in railway you have mainline, you yep. have urban, you have uh, light transportation, you have high speed. So very different nature of uh, objects, very different constraints. Next step in, uh, in terms of evolution of cybersecurity, how do you see the market evolve over time and the railing? Where, where I see the, the next step on the standard is there will be the regulation and the certification. Today, for safety, we have the standard, the regulation and the certification. We will go to the same path for cybersecurity, meaning that we need to mobilize well, another part of the ecosystem the independent safety assessors, the notified bodies. Those people are not experts in cybersecurity, but they are experts in certifications. So we need to start to talk to them now. The standard is not published, but it is almost frozen, I would say, by end of October, it will be frozen definitely. So we know the, the shape, we know the main ideas. So we can start to discuss about that because the next frontier will be, do we need to certify on, I would say, two fronts. How do we introduce and do we need to introduce cybersecurity in the safety authorization process? And second, do we need to have a dedicated certification scheme for cybersecurity? So two topics need to be addressed. It is not a cyber issue. It's a topic for real, where cyber people will be bringing value and helping. Exciting. Second day is, uh, uh, we'll see definitely the market growing, uh, the standards, uh, the pushing market. And there is a real need. So the market really yeah. needs new cybersecurity solutions uh, all over. Easy to deploy, not endangering the safety and the homologation easy to maintain, resilient over time. So this is a little bit the, the profile of the, of the solution that we need to implement, making sure that they can fit with the real business, knowing that there is a couple of evolutions in the business model that we, have, we need to anticipate. So people are used to buy, you know, from a kind of a asset point of view, you do investment and then you operate. We may need to enter more and more in a mode, the subscription mode where you, you subscribe to a service and whatever you put as equipment is something that can be changed over time, yeah. but it's part of the service. So this kind of a delivery model still needs to be built because we talk about uh, industrial control system with homologation and security, changing equipment, what does this mean?
we still need to work on that. Okay, thank you very much, Eddie, Welcome. for the next uh, Innotrans uh, towards the next two years. Let's see how it goes. Let's do a tour.